It's Doodle Bud. Today we're checking out this little smartphone accessory. It's a little clip-on microscope. This was sent to me by Apexel for uh, for review. I used it actually the other day in a, a video when I was checking nib line widths. I did all my measurements with this thing. Worked quite well, but I thought I'd just give a quick couple quick minutes to chat about this thing. And we'll also compare it to your standard loop. Is it better? Is it worse? How do they compare? Uh, if you want some information, there'll be a link down there in the description, and they also included a discount code. So anybody looking to, to get something off their site, you save 15%. I think the co code is just doodlebud, but the information will be down there. So let's check this thing out real quick, how you set it up, and then uh, let's look at some stuff. So it comes with this handy little pouch to keep everything safe. Uh, obviously, the clip-on microscope is there, instructions, and then a little USB Type-C cable. That's how this thing charges. Uh, just a note, I tried to plug in my Type-C cable that charges this exact phone I'm running the channel on, and I guess the housing on mine was a little bit too big. This one here fits in perfectly, so don't throw it out because maybe your cable doesn't work. It's pretty straightforward. You got instructions in English and uh, Chinese there on the back, but essentially you just clip it on now. You always have... On all the new phones, you have a cluster of lenses. You need to use your your main primary lens that's on there. I'll show you how it goes on. It's a little sensitive. You got to find it and and move it back and forth, and you, you'll see the image appear. And uh, there's a special note. I'm not an iPhone person, but for the 13 Pro Max folks, um, I guess there's a setting you just need to change. They give you instructions on what you need to do. Everything you need is here. Again, you just plug it in to charge it through the USB. There's a little light on here. I'll show you that as well. And uh, also with the lens, it's a very, very close working distance. So here's an example. What are we looking at there? I guess that's an ant. So you don't hover above it. You don't angle on it. You put it right on and squash it. The working distance for this little attachment is essentially right up against the face. So when you look at stuff, you'll put it onto your phone, put it face down on there, and then you'll see your sample. And that is why they have the light simple on and off. It's like a three to four second hold. You could see there, and then one quick tap, marginally brighter, just a touch more luminosity, but not a whole bunch. Well, let's, uh, let's clip this thing on and show you some stuff. Before you do that, though, you do have to take off your cell phone case if you got one. So when you go to put it over top, you can see that's the little hole you're trying to line up. That's the lens there. You're trying to line up with your, with your primary lens. So how you can find the primary lens, you'll put your finger along here and see which one of the three covers everything up. That's the ticket. So that's the one we got to line up. Uh, it fits like pretty much all phones. It's got a little slidey dighty action here. So, you know, wherever your lenses are, this, I, I didn't, I can't remember what percentage of phones they said, but it was like 98% of phones or something like that. So let's pop it on here. So here you put it on, it takes a few seconds to find it, but you'll have that round circle and then you just adjust it on your phone so you don't have a, a dark spot. So you might have one over in the corner. You just push it back the other way. You'll get the idea of it, but there you go. Get it so it's not obstructed. Now let's check out a few samples. First thing we'll check out, let's just check out the instruction manual that comes along. So if you look at the prints here, I used to work in the pre-press industry when I first started my engineering career. We were looking printing plates all the time because we made the devices that made the printing plates and shot the lasers and all that type of stuff. So you'd always be running tests and looking at samples. This looks super familiar to me. Uh, the nice thing with this is you can just snag a picture all of a sudden and then compare it against another sample. Here we are checking out a Canadian $5 bill. You can see all the little details in there. And there's also some micro printing that's going along here. So you can see Bank of Canada, there's some micro printing. So if you need to check out coins or whatever it is, documents, this is a great thing because if you, let's say you see something that's suspicious or you can tell it's fake, all of a sudden, same thing, you can snag a picture of it or record video as you go. Our Canadian money is a little more colorful. So we've got these little plastic windows on here with like holographic things. So you can see the light coming off and they're doing its thin, thin film effect, which is pretty cool as well. There's Honest Abe looking at us. Let's check around, see what else we can find on an American bill. Here's a little bit of micro printing I found here underneath the eagle. And then we got some USAs down here as well. This thing we're coming up to is a laser engraving. So this is a pen case I did and you can see here I engraved in my logo. So if you uh, like to do laser engraving or other things like this and you want to check your settings, you can check, compare samples, you had different powers or different speeds you were running, whatever it was, you can go and check just how good your engraving job was and how the little adjustments change the overall outcome. If you had a part fail and you needed to check out the threads, how they're holding up or how they're stressing over a multiple number of uses, this is just great. Like it's right in your pocket. This is something, you know, everyone's got their phone in their pocket too. 
you can just keep it in there if you need to check things out. Even in a classroom, this is handy because then you can hook your smartphone up if there's a smart TV. You all said you got uh, a microscope you can share with everyone in the classroom or, or the presentation room, whatever it is, uh, right from your phone. Here's a knife edge here as well. I'm into sharpening knives and straight razors. So you could check, you know, how your edge is doing as well. You can check it with a loop, which is quick and, quick and easy. But this is nice if you're, uh, you know, change, uh, changing stropping compounds, buffing compounds, that type of stuff, or wanting to know the difference between two different types of stones that are maybe the same grit. You can see the effect it's having on your edge. A cool thing with a microscope is you can turn it into a measurement tool. So I simply have a cheap calibration slot I bought off of AliExpress, and now we can see this line here on my healing pad is 0.4 millimeters wide. So this is what I was looking through. I used this the other day uh, when I did a whole bunch of measurements and all these nibs. So I did like 47 nibs, measured all the line width so we can have a measurement. I just put this here. Oh, if we can get a focus on it, but it's really tricky. There we are. So it's just got some divisions on here, uh, different widths. So just 0.1 millimeter. These are super cheap. Again, I picked mine up on AliExpress. So now you can measure some stuff. So yeah, overall, like I'm pretty impressed with this little thing. For the price it is, I, I can't remember off the top of my head here. The, again, the information will be down there, but I think it's in the neighborhood of like $35 or something like that. And so you're getting a really nice clear picture. Uh, you know, that's the benefit now. The caliber of image we get through our smartphones, this whole channel is done through a phone. It's pretty cool. I can quickly turn my phone and, and have some nice magnification. Speaking of magnification, so this says 200x. This is a 10X. Let's just compare, let's look at a nib right now just to see what the difference looks like. So let's say this is your new pen and you're, you know, maybe something feels off, you wanna check it out or you just wanna see how it looks. So you could take your loop, put it in front of your smartphone here. Of course you would do this in front of your eye, but just to give an example, a comparison here on the phone, you can give that nib a look and you can definitely see, okay, yeah, no, everything's looking good. It's nicely aligned. It's, it's a little tricky to get focus. But it does sort of work. Uh, again, this looks much better in your eye. Let's put the little microscope lens on and just compare what the magnification looks like. There we are. Now we got pretty good magnification. And it's nice clear picture. You do get a little bit of a funny effect off that ring light that's in front of that lens. But you can get a nice clear picture. You can get more detail again. But I don't think this lens is 200x. I think it's 20x. And let me tell you why. So here's the thing when it comes to magnification and microscopes. A standard microscope in like a chemistry lab, let's say, you have your different objective le uh, lenses in the bottom of that little turret. Let's maybe it's got three lenses. There will be, let's say, a, a 10x, a 20x, and a, a 40x. All right. And then you're looking through an eyepiece in that microscope. That's a 10x eyepiece. So the, the final magnification on one of those microscopes is the eyepiece times the objective. So to get 200 times magnifications, it's 10x eyepiece, 20x objective lens. Um, this is not a 200x. I think, and this happens with other ones too, I'll show you. You've probably seen something like this on Amazon or AliExpress where they say from 40 to 1,000. I've even seen one that says 40 to 1,600, which is insane. I think they're grandfathering in the extra 10x factor. Um, I don't know why, maybe that's just a lingo or they don't understand how magnification works or they're trying to include a uh, zoom or magnification you can get through your phone as well. I'm not quite sure. This one was especially be wrong because, well, there is no magnification that you're actually getting through your phone. So, uh, and also like this one isn't there, but I've seen them say 1600 times magnification. You are now kind of going up against the theoretical limit that you can look at when it comes to visible light. And you're not getting that for 40 bucks. So let's do a quick test. I'll do two tests, sort of an anecdotal one, and then I'll do a measurement on here and uh, we'll flush this out and show you it's 20X. For this first test, I thought of sugar. I went online, found a picture of granulated sugar under proper 200 times magnification, like a laboratory microscope. You could see it there on the screen now. Then I repeated the same test using this lens. So I went upstairs, got some granulated sugar, took a picture. Now it's very nice and clear, but you can see the difference in the magnification. I can zoom in on my screen to make the things look bigger. They're very nice and clear. Actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the sharpness of the overall picture, but it's not the same level of magnification. So I figured let's do a proper test. This whole screen is just pixels. So let's start counting pixels. So for this, I got the uh, assistance of my TV remote because I saw this circle. I need something 
that I can look at and get a picture of through my camera here on the phone, just regular 1x magnification. And then I need to fill it up with this here as well. So it has to be the right object. And this looked perfect. It's a nice circle, nice contrast. I can, uh, what I'm gonna do here is right now I'm shooting in 16 by nine. I'm going to take a picture of this. I'll put the camera into one by one, take a picture. I'll bring it in to make it as big as possible. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna zoom in with the phone. I'll just do regular one X, but I'll bring it in as close as possible and get it as large as possible while it's still in focus. So I bring it in closer, it's out of focus. So I'll find that spot wherever that is and go, okay, let's say it's there, take the picture. Then I'll do the same thing and just put this right on top, take the same picture, and then we will compare. So we will have to then say, well, wait a second, if I'll, I'll you know, crop the photo down, put a box around it so we can measure how many pixels high and wide it is. And then we can take that measurement and go, well, at 200 times, it should be 200 times more pixels. And just thinking about this really quick, this number of pixels in my phone, I. Uh, just mathematically speaking, we're not going to have a big enough phone, so I'm pretty sure it is 200x, but let's do the test. So what you see now is the best picture I could get up close and still in focus with the camera in one by one. I then cropped it down as small as possible. Turns out the picture is actually smaller than the smallest crop you can do. The smallest crop, at least on my phone, is 88 by 88 pixels. You can see we have an extra few pixels on the sides, maybe four pixels on each side. Then did the same thing with the lens on there. You can see much bigger, nice and clear as well. Crop that down and checked out that size and it's about 1600 pixels by 1600 pixels. So 80 times 20 is 1600. So and you could just see by the level of magnification, this is, it's a 20X lens. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. This really did a great job of measuring uh, all these samples I had to do this. This is really great. I could just clip it on my phone I didn't have to go. I have my other microscope, which is seriously, you know set up um, But then I have to put data on that one take it out put it onto this phone So for my editing, I, I really enjoy doing it But I will sort of get out for larger projects. This thing is nice and handy this like in an office space if you're an engineering or something like that um, technical type things where you need to take a look at inspect parts or whatever it is, looking at prints, things like that. This is super handy to have in your pocket, especially the fact, you know, you can charge it USB and then you can take pictures and catalog things. That is great. Um, all sorts of other applications, as I mentioned. The one application I actually prefer a regular loop over would actually be for, let's grab the pen that's over here, for a tuning and adjusting a nib. There is just something, you just put this up to your eye, and you know it takes up pretty much the whole field of view check the nib make your adjustment check it again um yeah you can i just find this is quicker and easier i tried doing one here it worked out i could adjust the nib um, but i just found just because the it's it's you know double the magnification this is 10x this is 20x so they do have one in a 100x which is a 10x that might be more suitable for nib tuning if that works for you um, because it is nice that you can take pictures or video and, and check your progress as you go. Um, so that's a nice way to record it. But just for quick nib tuning, things like that, I find just a regular loop does the trick because it's, it's a real quick tune that you're doing, then you're checking it again, back and forth, back and forth. But, uh, other than that, I think for every other task here, I threw at it, this thing has worked quite well. So. I really enjoy this. Uh, this would be great for like a classroom, teachers, all those sort of stuff. Very economical and affordable. I always wondered if these things worked. You see them, uh, pictures of them all over the place and sometimes there's telephoto lenses. I was always skeptical, but I'm actually quite impressed, especially at the, uh, the clarity of the magnification on here too. So anyways, thanks to Apexel for sending this over. Again, information is down below. I just got a really cool parcel in yesterday, so stay tuned and we'll catch you next time.